Welcome everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss how to access Diesel and Power Factory from outside GUI using Python. Before accessing the uh, Power Factory using Python, you need to identify which Python versions are compatible with your particular installation of Power Factory. So in order to see that, you need to go to your C drive or your installation drive where you have installed Power Factory. In my case, uh, my Power Factory is installed in program files, Dixieland, Power Factory 2022, and within the installation drive, you will find a folder known as Python. When you go into this folder, you are going to see multiple versions of Python. So basically, these are all the version of Python which can be used with this particular installation of Power Factory. Then, based on any of this version, you can install that particular Python in your system. In my case, I have Python 3.9 installed with me. So what I'm going to do in this session is uh, we are going to use this Python 3.9 to access Dixieland Power Factory. Now we will be using uh, a Jupyter Notebook uh, to write a code for accessing Power Factory using Python. The first thing we need to do is we need to create an environment in which we can use this uh, because uh, since we are using a software which is not a part of uh, uh, this environment so we need to create an environment. So for this purpose how you can create the environment the first thing you need to do is you need to import two libraries, uh, system related libraries, OS and SES. So then you need to define the path uh, where this uh, Python DLL file is available. So you go to the path which I already showed you. You go there and within 39, you see, because I'm using 3.9, so that's why. So in the same way, whichever Python you are using, you need to copy that path and use it. So there, then you need to append that path into the existing system path and then uh, update the environment, operating system environment. So once you do these steps, Python uh, Power Factory will be uh, updated into the Windows environment. Next thing you need to do is import Power Factory. So we can use import Power Factory SPF. So in order to just reduce the size of this uh, uh, library name, we have used PF. So once we run this, uh, Power Factory uh, module is imported. The next step is to get the Python uh, Power Factory application. So for that purpose, we are going to use pf.get application. Once we do that, the application is going to be loaded. And then we need to define which case to open. So for this uh, for this demonstration purpose, we are using a nine bus system, which is readily available in the examples of uh, uh, PSSE itself, uh, uh, Power Factory itself. So we use the name. So app dot activate project nine bus system, and after the running of this uh, 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 part you will get a response from Power Factory. So if the response is zero, this will mean that this particular case has been uh, loaded successfully. If you get one, this means that the project cannot be activated or there is some other issue, you need to figure it out. So once we press run for this one, so we receive zero, this means uh, that nine bus system case or whatever case, uh, uh, case uh, we were planning to call into power factory has been called. Now the next thing is it is uh, 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 within power factory what usually happens is uh, we have multiple study cases within a base case. So if, so if you have uh, multiple cases then you need to identify which are those cases and which of those cases to activate. So for that purpose, what we are going to do is we are going to get the project folder and within the project folder, we are interested in the study cases. So what we are going to do is we are going to call the folder. We are going to name a variable uh, as uh, study case folder and get project folder. So once we run this, 
python is going to import all the uh, study uh, 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 folder within that, uh, all the projects within that study folder and then the next thing is we need to get the contents of all those study so basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to call all the studies so please let me know what are the different kind of studies we have in that particular case so once i run this these are going to be updated into uh, the object study underscore case so now let's <coughs> run a loop and try to see how many uh, study cases are available within this particular project which is nine bus system so for this what i am doing is i am looping through each object within the study case and i am printing the name of each case so once i press run so you see here <coughs> there are total of eight cases available in this uh, and then we need to call one case so always remember that in uh, the first case is always uh, automatically activated so no need to perform any other task so for instance if you want to use load flow case it will be already activated but if you want to use some other case like comparison excitation model case or case number three case number five then you need to do the <coughs> next steps which i'm going to tell you here so then you you have to mention the active case so in in this case uh, the index start from zero so let's say you wanted to uh, call this comparison excitation model case then in this case the index will be zero one two three four five six so you would have used six here since i am uh, i plan to use the load flow case that's why uh, i need i do not need to do this stuff because these are already uh, this load flow case is already activated and i i will simply go directly to get from study case com ldf so com ldf is basically we want to perform load flow analysis so for the load flow analysis we are calling this com ldf so once we run it comldf has been called then the next step is to perform load flow analysis so for that purpose we are going to use ldf.execute so once we run ldf.execute and we get as a return value 0 the 0 means that the case has been run successfully so now that load flow has been run what we can do is we can extract the results uh, from uh, this uh, perfectory case so first of all we will learn how to ret uh, retrieve these uh, bus voltages so for the bus voltages we, what we are going to uh, get is we are going to ask uh, uh, perfectory to give us get calculation relevant objects and within these uh, relevant objects what we are interested in we are interested in all the objects which are rela uh, related to element terminal so terminal element or basically the buses itself so i am calling all those objects which are related to terminal so here steric is a wild card which means all the buses you have in your power factory i need the data of all those buses in a <coughs> object variable known as buses so once i have called all those uh, terminals uh, 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 names or the objects into this bus so what i can do is i can iterate through each element and then print the name of that particular element and the value attribute of that and for the attribute what we are using we want uh, we are using the attribute u which is basically your voltages so once we run this uh, script and then we are going to print the name of that particular bus and the value of that particular attribute so once we run this so what you see here is for each bus we have per unit attribute per unit values printed accordingly in the same way if we want to uh, get the value of all the line elements the transmission lines or the cables or line elements within our system so how we can do this in the same way like we use steric dot elm term uh, for lines we have to use elm lne and we will show you in the 
upcoming sessions how you can check whether uh, what kind of element uh, uh, does uh, does this particular uh, equipment fall into we can see it from the gui so once we run this what we are going to do is we are going to call all the objects related to line elements and in the same way here we are going to iterate through each line element and then print the name of that particular line and the loading of that particular line and once i print run so you see the percentage loading of each line so these are the total all the lines i have in my case and the values printed 